going? Yep. Okay. So when we're welding, when we're welding on the chassis, the aluminum will bow towards the heat. So when this seam is being done, the aluminum will move towards it ever so slightly. So what we have to do is make sure we have a 40 inch piece of uh, material between the rear and the front or else it moves in permanently. What happened on this chassis, chassis number five, is our welder. We had a jig that held at the right distance, had removed the jig from the rear to have lots of room to weld, and this rear end has moved in a sixteenth of an inch. And that's enough that it pinches our engine module coming in and out. Hmm. Now we can get it in there, we can force it in there, but it won't move in and out as easily as changing a tire. So this chassis, chassis number five, mm -hmm. is probably going to become a team test car where we'll only swap the engine module with uh, tools and ratchet straps um, and, and levers. And we won't be selling this one because this is exactly what happens when we don't have either a jig plate, which would be a plate going across that CNC cut to have holes exactly on center, 40 inches apart, and it attaches the material to the right distance while we weld, or a 40 inch piece of material pressing against the walls. If we don't, it will bow in and permanently bring in the chassis, and that's enough to, to uh, hinder modularity. Another note about modularity, um, these corner seams, need to be ground down after they're welded so that the interior module can slip in. So these seams on the top are no problem at all. But these corner seams, we actually use the edge of an angle grinder, maybe a four inch angle grinder, and smooth them down. We don't cut them all the way down, but we get them down to being about an eighth, between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch thick. So we have comfortable room to slide in our modules. That's how we finish the weld seams and mating services. That's it, thanks.